In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. As we gather this day, made by the Lord, let us be mindful of his goodness and compassion, the way he calls us to come and follow him, the way that he will consecrate Catherine to become a consecrated uh, virgin. As we gather this day, mindful of God's goodness and compassion, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. that the work you have begun in her may be brought to fulfillment, and that she may be found worthy to complete what she now begins, so as to bring you a full and perfect offering. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through our windows, peering through our lattices. My lover speaks, he says to me, arise, my beloved my dove, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, 
The time of pruning the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines in bloom give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the, of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things and consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God, depending on the faith to know him and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it, or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue in my pursuit in hope that I may possess it 
since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies ahead, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, for they may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord.
come, listen to me, my child. I will teach you reverence for the light, Lord. How do you feel? Good. Dear brothers and sisters, today the church consecrates one of our sisters in Christ, Catherine May Webb, to a life of virginity. She's a daughter and sister, aunt and relative, friend and co-worker. She is a fellow parishioner and above all, a faithful member of the body of Christ. In being consecrated or being set apart in this way, God is calling her to be more closely united to himself and be dedicated to the service of the church. Some of us may not have a great amount of knowledge about the order of virgins and this special expression of consecrated life. In 2008, Pope Benedict addressed the participants of an international congress of consecrated virgins. Let us listen to what Benedict said. Quote, while the order of virgins is a special expression of consecrated life that blossomed anew in the church after the Second Vatican Council, its roots are ancient. They date back to the dawn of apostolic times when, with unheard of daring, certain women began to open their hearts to the desire of consecrated virginity. In other words, to the desire to give the whole of their being to God, which had had its first extraordinary fulfillment in the Virgin of Nazareth and her yes. In the thought of the fathers, Mary was the prototype of Christian virgins, and their perception highlighted the newness of this new state of life to which a free choice of love gave access." Unquote. As you, Catherine, join those women who, in the words of Pope Benedict, with unheard of daring, began to open their hearts to the desire to give the whole of their being to God. We join in prayer that God continue to sustain you and now use you in a special way in spreading the kingdom of God and giving the world the spirit of Christ. In a very short time, Catherine, you will be anointed with a new grace and God will consecrate you by a new title. You will be bound to Christ, the Son of God, in a covenant to last forever and become a sign of the great mystery of salvation proclaimed at the beginning of human history and fulfilled in the marriage covenant between Christ and his church. Let us take a moment to reflect on today's readings, the grace of your consecration and the calling you have received. You are being called to a life of prayer. 
It is through prayer that you encounter Jesus Christ. Our first reading comes from the Song of Songs. And while the figures are clearly human figures, it's an allegory of the relationship between Christ and his church and of Christ and the individual. It speaks of our desire to know Christ, to see Christ, to hear Christ. This desire is echoed in our second reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, in which Paul writes that knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, is the supreme good, and everything else is rubbish. It is a single-mindedness of purpose, laser-like focus upon how looking to God is one's first purpose in life, and everything else comes a distant second. It is through prayer, Catherine, that you will meet Christ. It is through prayer that you will know yourself and where God is calling you. It is through prayer that you will come to know the world about you. It is through prayer that the saint whose feast day is today, Saint Faustina knew and was able to tell of God's divine mercy and transmit to the world at a time when nations of Europe were mobilizing for war, be not afraid. It was in a life lived in a solitary cell that was attached to a church in Norwich, England, over six centuries ago, that Julian of Norwich lived. She also lived in turbulent times, a time in which the Black Plague was ravaging Europe. She herself became so ill that she should, thought she would die. And it was then that she experienced a mystical revelation from Christ, of which she writes the following. God sees us perfect and waits for the day when human souls mature, so that evil and sin will no longer hinder us. And Jesus tells us, all shall be well and all shall be well, and all manner shall be well. This was said, she wrote, so tenderly, without blame of any kind, toward me or anybody else. Catherine, as you commit yourself to Christ and meet Christ in prayer, allow yourself to see the world as Christ sees the world. As you commit yourself to Christ, Pray fervently for the spread of the Christian faith and the unity of all Christians. Pray earnestly for the spread of, for the, uh, pray earnestly to God for the welfare of the married. Remember also those who have forgotten their father's goodness and have abandoned his love, so that God's mercy may forgive where his justice must condemn. As a consecrated virgin, you are also similar to the virgins spoken of in today's gospel, the parable of the ten virgins. The five wise virgins had extra oil to light their lamps upon the arrival of the bridegroom, who of course stands for Jesus. Many scripture scholars look upon this parable as an allegory. And the, so the question arises as to for what the precious oil symbolized. For St. Matthew, that oil corresponds to good works. In the Sermon of the Mount, St. Matthew tells us, Jesus tells us that our good deeds are the light of a lamp that must shine before others. Later on in the Gospel, Jesus' response to the Christian who says, Lord, Lord, but fails to do the will of the Father, is Jesus' response, I never knew you. The same response given in today's parable to the five foolish virgins who did not welcome the groom with lighted lamps upon his arrival. And so for you, Catherine, while prayer will be a life force in your life, good works will be the fire of your lamp. 
Let your light shine before men and women, that your Father in heaven may be glorified, and his plan of making all things one in Christ come to perfection. Love everyone, especially those in need. Help the poor. Care for the weak. Teach the ignorant. Protect the young. Minister to the old. Bring strength and comfort to widows and all in adversity. There's a tale told of a long ago mountain village from which a young boy wandered away. It was the start of the winter, and when the inhabitants of the village realized he was missing, they began a frantic search for him. As night descended, however, they found themselves unsuccessful and returned to the village. While they would resume their search the following day, there was little optimism among them that this young boy would be able to survive the night freezing air. At the first glimmer of dawn broke across the eastern sky and preparations were being made to resume the search, a cry was heard from a distant part of the village. As people rushed to where it was heard, their fears turned to tears of joy. For the young boy had found his way back to the village. As they welcomed him back, they asked how he had been able to survive the freezing temperatures. He admitted that he had been colder than he had ever been before. But then he told them that as he sat frightened and alone, he saw in the distance the fire from that village. And he thought of the people and the life that was lived there. He felt their love. And this gave him strength and warmth. And this allowed him to know that he was never alone. And this gave him the direction home. The fire of your good works will give strength and direction to others. It will help lead others, not to a village on the side of a mountain, but will direct others to the heavenly city, the new and eternal verse. Your joy and your crown, even here on earth, will be Christ, the son of the virgin and the bridegroom of virgins. He will call you to his presence and into his kingdom, where you will sing a new song as you follow the Lamb of God wherever he leads you. Are you resolved to persevere to the end of your days in the holy state of virginity and in the service of God and his church? Are you resolved to follow Christ in the spirit of the gospel that your whole life may be a faithful witness to God's love and a convincing sign of the kingdom of heaven? Are you resolved to accept solemn consecration as a bride of our Lord Jesus Christ the Son of God. Thanks be to God. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that by the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, He will pour out the Holy Spirit of His love on His, his servant, whom He has chosen to be consecrated to His service.
and to all other bishops the grace of growing daily in the likeness of Christ, bridegroom of the church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Maintain and foster in your church love for holy virginity. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen in Christ's faithful people hope of a glorious resurrection and of the life of the world to come. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Increase in holiness and in number those who follow the counsels of the gospel. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Reward a hundredfold of the parents of your handmaids for the sacrifice they have made. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless these handmaids, make them holy, and consecrate them to your servants. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord, hear the prayers of your church. Look with favor on your handmaid whom you have called in your love. Set her on the way of eternal salvation. May she seek only what is pleasing to you and fulfill it with watchful care. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving Father, chaste bodies are your temple. You delight in sinless hearts. Our nature was corrupted when the devil deceived our first parents, but you have restored it in Christ. He is your word through whom all things were made. He has made our nature whole again and made it possible for mortal people to reflect the light of angels. Lord, look with favor on your handmaid. She places in your hands are resolved to live in chastity. You prompt her in this, her intention. Now she gives you her heart. Only you can kindle this fire of love and feed its brightness, giving strength and perseverance to our will. Without you, our flesh is weak, bound by the law of nature, free with false freedom, imprisoned by habit, softened by the spirit of the age. You have poured out your grace upon all your peoples. You have adopted as heirs of the new covenant, sons and daughters from every nation under heaven, countless as the stars. Your children are born, not of human birth, nor of man's desire, but of your spirit. Among your many gifts, you give to some the grace of virginity. Yet the honor of marriage is in no way lessened. As it was in the beginning, your first blessing still remains upon this holy union. Yet your loving wisdom chooses those who make sacrifice for marriage for the sake of the love of which it is the sign. They renounce the joys of human marriage, but cherish all that it foreshadows. Those who choose chastity have looked upon the face of Christ, its origin and inspiration. They give themselves wholly to Christ, the son of the ever-Virgin Mary, and the heavenly bridegroom of those who in his honor dedicate themselves to lasting virginity. Lord, protect her who seeks your help. She desires to be strengthened by your blessing and consecration. Defend her from the cunning and deceit of the enemy. Keep her vigilant on her and on her guard. May nothing tarnish the glory of perfect virginity or the vocation of purity which is shared by those who are married. Through the gift of your spirit, Lord, give her modesty with right judgment, kindness with true freedom, kindness with true wisdom, gentleness with strength of character, freedom with the grace of chastity. Give her the warmth of love to love you above all others. Make her life deserve our praise without seeking to be praised. May she give you glory by holiness of action and purity of heart. May she love you and fear you. May she love you and serve you. By yourself, her glory, her joy, her whole desire. By her comfort and sorrow, her wisdom and perplexity, her protection in the midst of injustice, her patience in adversity, her riches in poverty, her food in fasting, her remedy in time of sickness. She has chosen you above all things. May she find all things in possessing you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Receive the ring that marks you as a bride of Christ. Keep unstained your fidelity to the bridegroom, that you may one day be admitted to the wedding feast of everlasting joy. Receive this veil by which you are to show that you have been chosen from other women to be dedicated to the service of Christ and of his body, which is the church. Receive the book of, liturg of the Liturgy of the Hours, the prayer of the Church. May the praise of our Heavenly Father be always on your lips. Pray without ceasing for the salvation of the whole world. I am a spouse to him whom the angels serve. Son and moon stand in his glory.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer sacrificial gifts, we pray, O Lord, grant generously to this your servant perseverance in the resolve she has made her own, so that when the doors are opened at the coming of the Most High King, she may merit to enter with joy into the heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the Virgin and declared the pure of heart blessed, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold fast to what is pleasing to you and becoming obedient for our sake even until death. He willingly offered himself to you as a perfect and fragrant sacrifice. He consecrated to a fuller service of your majesty those who, for love of you, leave all earthly things and promised they would find treasure in heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing with you your praise as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant, to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant and all those who are holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of this your servant, which we make to you on her day of consecration. Sanctify this offering in your mercy, so that she who by your gift has today united herself more closely to your Son, 
may hasten gladly to meet him when he comes in glory at the end of time. Be pleased, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to you, to, to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice to spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through the participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to sign and faith and rest. Grant on the Lord, we pray, in all who seek in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and grace. To us,
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Replenished by these sacred gifts, O oh Lord, we humbly pray that the way of life chosen by your servant, Sir Catherine, may constantly benefit the advancement of human society and unceasingly profit the growth of the church through Christ our Lord. Amen. A word of uh, acknowledgement and, and thanks um, before our final blessing. Um, I especially thank the formation team that helped Catherine to come to this day in her life. I thank Brother Rich Jasper, who's here in the sanctuary, who was her spiritual director over these years, uh, to Jennifer Settle, who is a delegate for the consecrated virginity in the Diocese of Orlando, who comes up from Florida to be with us today. Please know our prayers go back with you to, to Florida, especially the people on the uh, west coast of, of Florida. Um, and the sister Ann David, who uh, certainly oversaw uh, these days um, leading up to this, as well as today. So thank you to, to the three of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I thank the clergy that are here, Father Carroll, uh, Norm Carroll, who's our vocation director, um, Father McQuaid, who is director of the cathedral, judicial vicar, pastor of a couple of parishes. He does a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I thank you. Um, Father Roger Dubow, who is the uh, pastor of um, St. Elizabeth's. I don't know where he is. He had, he had a, a lead, nothing personal. <laughs> so we thank him in absentia. Um, and Father uh, and Deacon Michael Boyer, we thank him. And Father Jack Mink, who is the pastor of St. Anne's. A parish, which is uh, um, Kathy's parish, home parish. I thank all the women who are part of St. Anne's Parish for helping and to manage uh, the reception, which is in the courtyard uh, right after Mass. Please uh, know that you're invited to, to go forward in order to continue to, to celebrate. Um, I thank the religious of our diocese who have encouraged Kathy as part of the consecrated life through inviting her to to dinner and the prayers and incorporating her into their various gatherings. I thank our music ministry up in the choir loft, uh, Dan Kin, our cantor, and Michael Davidson, who is the uh, organist. Um, and I thank the other ministers of our uh, liturgy today, our seminarians and servers, uh, our electors, our gift bearers, and to all of you who are, who are present for today. Um, and I also thank our Father Michael Preston, who is the MC um, today, wherever he is, he's back there. Um, I thank him. And I congratulate you, Kathy, for, uh, for professing and for being consecrated to, to virginity. And maybe we could show our own joy at this moment by a good old American tradition. <laughs> The Lord be with you. May the Almighty Father, by his protection, keep intact the resolve he has poured into your heart to live in blessed virginity. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, 
who unites to himself the hearts of sacred virgins in a nuptial covenant, make your heart fruitful by the word that is God's seed. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who came down upon the Blessed Virgin Mary and descending today, has consecrated your heart, fire you with zeal for the service of God and the Church. And may Almighty God bless all of you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.